Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to World of Tanks. Now, I haven't played this game in about a year until this week, where I got some games in, and, um, well, kind of wanted to make a video about it and, and talk to you a little bit about it, because it's, uh... Is it just me, or do they fix it? Sorry, I just got completely distracted by the guns on the IS-22. Um, yeah, so, here's the thing. About a year ago, I got completely burnt out on the game with the marathon and everything, and then I was grinding credits for the New Year's event, I remember doing that. And then I just quit the game afterwards, because, uh, well, you know. It's the most frustrating game on the planet, but it's also the best game on the planet, and simultaneously the worst. And I'll explain why in, in, in a little bit here, but um, I want to get into not the new tanks, like for example we have the uh, Czech light tanks which have been introduced recently, which aren't that great. And then there's also the Polish tank destroyers which have been introduced, which I um, wasn't around for these when they got introduced, and I also wasn't around for the British wheeled mediums. They're technically mediums, right? Yeah, I thought these were, these were light tanks, but no, they're mediums. The Concept 5, the AEC, and everything in between. Um, don't know much about these either, so yeah, there's a whole load of things which I, I really don't know much about, but other than that, the game is still pretty much the exact same game that I quit some time ago, and today I want to do... Sorry about that. Today I want to do... A live battle first and foremost, so let's do one of those with the IS-22. Not the greatest tank in the world, but I've been doing pretty okay with it. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about the game and sort of my experience coming back and, and, and stuff like that. So first and foremost, what are the main reasons that I quit playing? Um, the economics changes that were announced that I didn't like about the equipment, about World of Tanks Plus and so on and so forth, which did get... Um, they didn't come out the way Wargaming wanted them to come out due to community backlash and stuff like that, so fair is fair. And then other than that, it was the matchmaking, which uh, it's not the tanks that you go up against that's such a big problem. I mean, plus two, minus two matchmaking is a little bit, you know, can be a bit frustrating when you're a tier six tank fighting against, you know, a whole bunch of uh, ridiculous overpowered tier eight premiums, which I think is the worst part of the game. Tier sixes versus tier eights. I think tier eights versus tier tens isn't as bad. Um, tier 5s versus tier 7s isn't as bad in my modest opinion, especially with the rebalance of lower tiers giving them more HP and so on and so forth, but you get the point. Um, I think that's the, that's the worst part of the game, and it's still around, it's still plus 2, minus 2, but it's not that that's the problem. The main problem I have with the matchmaking is that it has a complete disregard for the skill level of the players on the two sides. So one side can have the average player with 45% win ratio, and the other the other side can have uh, the average win ratio of the player be like, you know, 55% maybe. Um, Numbers-wise, it doesn't maybe look like the largest difference ever, but you've got to remember this is 15 versus 15. And if your skill level makes it so you win... 5% or 10% more games than the other guy in a 15 versus 15 environment where all of the other 29 players on the map are completely random, well, that's a big deal. 1% um, is a massive deal. In fact, people with 49 and 51% win ratios are completely different players. And I mean completely, completely different players. Um... And so, keeping that in mind, the game really doesn't take that into consideration much. And so what ends up happening, also due to the way the maps are set up, the tanks are set up, um, some of the mechanics work and so on and so forth, you end up with games that last about 3 minutes. Um, 5 to 15, 15 to 3, 15 to 2, stuff like that. Um, and the moment you see 1-0 on the scoreboard, chances are it's going to be 15 to 2 for that game, right? The, the moment the first tanks falls, it's like a domino effect. Not always, you do get some games that are relatively close, or at least somewhat closer than others, but... At the same time, you also get... Well, you get people like the Type 63, which, you know, are a bit careless and end up doing stuff like that. 
um, losing half their HP for no reason, and credit where credit is due, he's side scraping now, and is that? Regular AP just goes through me like that. Okay, let's not play against him, let's play against the Leo. Uh, or, uh, you know, bait out a few shots. That's all, that also works. Yeah, sorry, buddy. Two guns instead of one. Uh, it's, uh... It's a problem, I know. There you go. Um, so I want to do one live battle to just sort of... Yeah, see, there you go. Nine to two. What did I say when the first tank fell and it was a light tank at the beginning? That we were going to have a incredibly quick battle. And... Here it is. Here's all my frustration with World of Tanks in one video. Um, or in one live battle, which is also, again, the big reason why I wanted to do this live. Um, there it is. You can see 15 to 3, 15 to 5, maybe that's what we're going to get. But all of the excitement from the game is gone within the first two minutes, right? I know we're going to win this, and now I'm just holding W onto the finish line. And I'm regretting why I wasn't as aggressive, because I only have 1.5 thousand damage and that's just not enough for a tank of this size and of this caliber. But in a 15 to 3 game on a relatively large map, what else am I supposed to do? Like, charge in front to deal with the type? Well, the King Tiger didn't really help me, I was alone fighting against... Okay, I, I was in a 2v2 situation, I had the other guy help with the Leo, but... yeah. There you go. What the hell am I supposed to do in a game like this? There's my frustration, there's why I quit. Um, and then, you know, and being overburned, and then on top of that, the uh, predatory mechanics of World of Tanks Plus and so on and so forth. So, I'm not overly excited by how the game is doing. Um, but on the other hand, I do have to give credit where credit is due to Wargaming. Uh, you can see the lights and the mediums picking up all the damage, because, you know, they got there first, and the enemy team is just... Oof. All right, tell you what, let's put my theory to the test. 45%. 46%, 44%, 53%, unlucky, 46%. Meanwhile, our team, well, let's, let's look a bit more at the top, 51%, assuming the S1 is going to be <laughs> 45%, yeah, I'm assuming he's going to be, like, not great at top damage so simply because he was in that kind of position, 52%, and the artillery, 51%, all right. Let's go our team. AMX, which died with zero, 52%. <laughs> Elkant, 47. VK, 57. 49. All right, let's go a bit up. 53. 51. <laughs> uh, mine is, I think, 51 point... Yeah, 51.5. Ish. 48, okay, he just had a really good game, in a platoon, mind you, 53, and of course the Barask at the top, ah, 50.8, okay, uh, although this is, a re no, it's not a real old account, 2018, okay, uh, some of the, 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 the platoons just had a monster battle of, of the Barasks, but fair enough, point is, slightly better players, slightly worse players, 15 to 2 result, 15 to 3, what was it? There you go. Um, that's all my frustration. However, like I said, credit where credit is due. If we take a look at all the tanks that have been implemented in the game recently, um, since I've quit, the premiums and the non-premiums, what stands out? Well, all of the ones that suck stand out because none of them are incredibly good. Aside from, I think, the last tank that I've played that's incredibly overpowered, and please disregard my abysmal performance with it, is the BZ-176, which I'm pretty sure is a tank that Wargaming is never, ever, ever, ever going to sell again, um, due to the fact that, yeah, well, look at it. Uh, also, I'm not training Brothers in Arms on, on this crew, I might you haven't played the tank in in a while. Um, the, 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 the few games that I've played with it, I've, I've, I've not been... Um, well, let's just say they haven't been perfect, and I've just been, been goofing around with it, I haven't really been playing seriously with it, and I haven't used gold ammunition on it, so, you know. Um, this is a tank where you need to spam four gold, it's, it's otherwise the AP ammunition is really, really not that good. Um, anywho, it, it's an incredibly powerful tank, and one that, like I said, 
I'm pretty sure they will not sell for a very, very long time. And if they do, it's going to be a very limited um, offer and it's going to be ridiculously expensive. They might put it in some loot boxes or something, but that's it. I don't think this tank is ever getting sold regularly. Um, ever, probably. So, yeah. With that in mind, let's take a look at some of the new tanks that have been added. So, since I've been uh, gone, Polish TDs. Bad, 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 average, bad, bad. Not necessarily in that order, but they're either bad or average. None of them are even above average for a tier dis for a, a tank destroyer tier for tier. Um, the Bruiser, the Govica, the Kilana have, against peer tier and lower tier opponents, somewhat of an acceptable armor profile. Um, I have the Barraza so I can show you. So, like... This bit and this bit can kind of sometimes bounce something, and the angling on the, the front of the turret isn't terrible, but the gun, the performance of the tank, the speed, the DPM, everything else is just eh, you know? None of it's particularly good. Um, and then we go over to the Czech light tanks. Terrible! Um, the, the Tier 7 Škoda is actually all right. Um, I haven't played with it, but I've seen a lot of videos about it, seen other community uh, content creators and stuff like that talk about it and play with it. The Tier 7 Skoda, in my modest opinion, I've played against a whole bunch of these, like the, the matchmaker's absolutely chock full of these tanks, um, is actually all right as a light tank. You can spot the gun is interesting, it's annoying to play against sometimes, the DPM is not bad, but it, the DPM is not good, but it can burst you out very quickly and then retreat, which is annoying. Um, so, so yeah, there, there's something to the tier 7. Tier 8, tier 9, tier 10, very quirky mechanics. Very fun to play tanks because of, uh, well, the fact that they have machine guns rather than cannons, right? I mean, this thing goes, brrr, yeah? Fascinating little guns. Um, something that, for example, you have in the Panzer 1C, if you remember it from way back in the day, from like, I don't know, hundreds of years ago, what it feels like, or, um, I think the Leopard also had that for a time, let me check. Not really a light tank player myself, so, uh, it's not the Panzer 1C, it's the Panzer 2C, Panzer... The Panzer 1 or the Panzer 2? I don't remember. The Panzer 1C, I was right. Yeah, this thing. There you go. This thing had a similar uh, uh, gun and, and that worked in a, in a similar fashion. Um, the, the Lux, I think, also has the same gun, right? Yeah. There you go. The, it looks like with the um, vents going sort of up and down on that thing, it, it kind of looks like uh, the brush you use for the toilet, right? Kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Or alternatively, if I look at it from a distance, those brushes that you clean the um, the barrels of guns with. Not like the actual barrel of a gun, but there you go. Like, the World of Tanks needed this, right? It's cool and it's fun. Mind you, this tank's a little bit too good for its own right. But the same thing was now given to the higher tier checks. Fascinating concept, except the tanks aren't really that good. But people play them because they're fun, and this is what the game needs. It needs more shite tanks. And and when I say shite, I don't mean that they're just tier for tier and, and you know, gun for gun worse than all the other tanks. I mean that they're a little bit different, but not better. Because power creep is certainly be was certainly becoming a problem. You take a look at some of the old tanks, like the... Uh, and again, I'm talking about stuff that was like two or three years ago, but still kind of relevant today. You take a look at something like the IS-4 or the IS-7. These haven't been buffed. Um, well, they, they've been buffed um, at one point when power creep was sort of addressed in the game, right? But prior to that, they haven't been buffed in God knows how long. And they've just been swept aside by all the cool new stuff that's been added to the game. I mean, why would you play an IS-4 when you can play an IS-4 with two guns, yeah? It's kind of the same thing, except, you know, not really, because then this got buffed, this got, this had its stats changed, and eh, turret armor 250 on this thing, 325 on this thing. Uh, right. 
and then weight, and then power, and then uh, okay, view range signal range doesn't really matter, and then everything else, and it's like, well, this just feels like it's better in, in every respect. Um, until you, until you again, take a look at the gun and stuff, which, again, has been uh, changed and buffed and so on and so forth some time ago, but the game was suffering from these problems, undoubtedly, and I'm glad to see that now, with these new lines that we're introducing, we're getting interesting tanks like i mean this is undoubtedly an interesting tank right it's probably one of the best in the line it's a car it's not a tank right? it's an armored car it's technically a medium tank uh not particularly fast not amazing at spotting so it's not like the french light tanks which the community really doesn't like because they're super annoying um so it's slower but you get some of the same mechanics and yeah it's, it's quirky and it's interesting but it's not very good and the game needed this. The game needed a lot more average or below average tanks for you to play around with in your battles and for the game to feel fun. Because I'll tell you what's not fun. By the time I quit, the Skoda, or the Skoda, however you want to pronounce it, T-56 was one of the most sold tanks in the game and one of the most played tanks in the game. Every tier 8 match was like three or four Skodas, three or four Sc or Scorpions, two or three SU-130 PMs the meta tanks of the time and don't get me wrong i uh i, I picked the wrong nationality i love my su-130 pm i absolutely love it this tank is a beast i have way too many battles played with it just focused on grinding credits with it I've never really been playing for mark of excellence with this thing ever um so i only have one but yeah so i've been playing tons with it and it's great, but I don't want to play with it every game, because this is the meta. I don't want the, the 600 or so tanks we have in the game to be reduced down to a couple of tier 8 premiums. With that said, let's go to a couple of replays, and I'll continue this rant, and I'll talk to you about a couple of other things about me coming back into the game. Uh, but, you know, while I'm doing it, I don't have anything else to show you in the garage, so you can look at some of the um, relatively decent battles I've had recently. And here we go. Uh, replay in the Object 277, one of my favorite tanks in the game, also representing the Baboon Army with uh, my, definitely my favorite decal ever in this game. Um, when, you, when you put it at just the right angle like that, it looks like the mouth of the Baboon is the actual gun. Um, just phenomenal. I think the most gorgeous tank I have in my garage, and I think a showcase this episode, not this episode, <laughs> this, um, this, uh, what do call it? This battle is as a showcase of why I like the gun, uh, well, well, both the gun and the, the platform tank itself so bloody much. Um, Alright, so anyways, back to the problems of the game itself and the matchmaking and everything. Um, I said my, my piece, I said what, I, what I'm what i annoyed with uh, with the game. Let's focus on the positives. I know usually you start off you know, the opposite way if you want to do constructive criticism and stuff. You want to address the negatives further. Sorry, you want to address the negatives last and the positives first. But um, th th there's a reason why I'm doing it like this, right? I think the, the matchmaking is the biggest problem in the game, and I think there's something that can be fixed. They can work towards it, but they really don't. However, I'll tell you something else. One of my favorite parts of this game is in between all the frustration, in between all the problems. When you play for Mark of Excellence, which is what I do, the reward that you feel when you get it, the reward when you feel when you do the missions, for example, which some of them are pretty difficult, um, the reward you get for, for achieving certain things in this game is incredible, right? That feeling, that exhilaration. And it's only there because of the frustration that you feel prior. And they're, they're intrinsically linked with one another. And that's why I love this game so much, and that's why I quit playing it, I get annoyed at Wargaming, I disapprove of some of their decisions, they change those things, I change my mind, and we, we're sort of locked in this battle of, you know, um, one against the other, and, and not, obviously not a literal um, argument or something against the developers or whatever, but, you know, on an on a emotional level of how I experience the game and how much I like it and so on and so forth. Um, we're sort of this tug of war, if you get, if, if you will, like a little bit of back and forth and, and all that. I mean, just look at this bloody, look at this bloody gun. You, you, you cannot miss strong Ruski tank. Anyways, um, so yeah. By the way, I don't know if I've if I've mentioned this prior previously, but um, 
For the most part, when there's not special events going on, like uh, the credit grinding or marathons and stuff like that, I play this game for Mark of Excellence. Uh, Mark of Excellence is... Well, you're probably better off going to the Skill for LTU Index page, which is, at this point, I think, the resource for World of Tanks that's, that's third party. It's a website where you can find literally everything about the game, from hidden statistics and on vehicles to 3D models to... Um, guides to suggestions for equipment, crew training, mechanics, um, maps for what to do on different maps and stuff like that. Literally everything, like anything you need, you can find that on that website. So you can go over there and check out what exactly Mark of Excellence is, but the TLDR of it is um, how are you playing the tank compared to the average for that... for those two weeks. I think it's every two weeks that it changes, right? Not every week? I think so. Anyways. Um, it's it's how do you compare for those two weeks compared to the average and, and you know, spread out across the entire player base. And there's a complex um, algorithm that calculates how much average damage you need per, you know, on, on in the last 100 battles to get certain percents of Mark of Excellence. And um, with the account that I have and with the skill level that I have and the equipment that I have and, and so on and so forth, I play for the second Mark of Excellence, which is 85%. Uh, does that mean you're better than 85% of the player base? No, you're better than the average score of the player base for the last two weeks. It's not like you're better than everyone else, because more people can have 100%, right? It's, it's, it doesn't quite work like that. It's a bit complicated to calculate. But yes, basically you need to play up to a certain level of performance. Um, and uh, assisting damage and um, actual damage is taken into consideration. Those are the only two stats. So there you go. Uh, and I absolutely love playing for that. It gives me a sense of achievement, it gives me a reason to play. Uh, because everything else, like grinding for tanks, grinding for missions, grinding for crew, god, god forbid you grind crew out for some reason, um, and have that as the only mod motivation. I mean, if, if that's fun for you, good on you, right? Like, enjoy. I, god forbid I do that. I would pull all my hair out. Um, it, it's just boring to me, right? Um, grinding for tanks, like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll unlock the next tier 10. Um, okay, now what? I have a tier 10, I don't really have crew for it, I don't really have much else for it. I have a tier 10 check medium tank or, or light tank or whatever, now what? Or do I just play it ad infinitum or, or what? Um, some people play the, the, the uh, more competitive game modes of Clan Wars and stuff like that. That can be extremely fun, I know. Um, not really my thing, don't really like, um... PvP that's not random like this in, in random battles. I'd much prefer the PvP in, in you know, random battles and stuff like that rather than um, organized matches and, and communicating with everyone else on the team and so on and so forth. But the reason I'm talking so much about uh, Mark of Excellence is because it's the reason I play this game. It's what gets me going and it's a challenge and it's very difficult. Uh, playing for the third mark of excellence is not something that everyone can do. I can't do that. Um, I mean, technically, I can do it on some tanks. I can do it on the lower tiers, no problem. However, I don't really like it, right? I don't like spamming gold. I don't like using bond equipment. I like using standard equipment. I think bond equipment is a little bit BS, because I think economically this game is heading towards the fact that it wants you to play just one tank for the rest of your life and use the best equipment on that tank, use experimental equipment or bond equipment on it, um, never take it off, uh, train all your crew for just one vehicle, one nationality, because that's the economically best thing to do, right? Invest all your time into one crew so you can get that crew up to the maximum level. That's what the game wants you to do, and now there's even rewards after you hit the maximum level of, of crew in the game. Uh, you get free experience, and you get those training manuals for each of your crews, so you can train up other crews. That's what the game wants you to do. The game wants you to do 10,000 battles in the same vehicle. I don't like that. Um, and so I use standard equipment, I use crews that aren't really that great because I don't have better. I only have like, what, 15,000 battles in the game. Um, I, I don't have crews with, with six skills or whatever. Um, some of them I have that are... Um, that are uh, relatively good, but those are mostly from events or missions and stuff that come with zero perks and, and so on and so forth. Um, I have the skill for LTU Commander, for example, which came with, I think, three free perks or something back in the day. Um, and I think you can hear him talking right now, so there you go. Um, so yeah, I, I have that, and that's cool, 
but everything else. No, that, that, that wasn't him. Not on this crew? Oh, I thought it was this crew. Anyway, might, might, must be another vehicle then. Um, that was, you know, th that, that's the thing. What, what a beautiful shot for the end. Um, I, I love playing that, and it makes the game fun. It also makes it so I'm not the most competitive when it comes to the game itself. You know, I could certainly optimize my stuff a little bit better. Um, I also don't use improved rations because I think they're too expensive. And I don't really want to spend months grinding just credits to be able to afford to play my tanks, right? I like to turn a profit at the end, so uh, I'll use gold if I have to, um, like, you know, premium ammunition and stuff. Um, or the more expensive ammunition, because it's technically not premium now, but you can buy it with credits. Um... But, yeah, um... There you go. I'm sorry, I just got a message from a very good friend of mine asking me what my favourite um, burner on the stove is. Uh, just out of the blue, and it got very distracting. I have to see what this is about. I'll talk to you in a second in another replay. Okay, here we go. Another um, well, semi-decent game, I would say, with the IS-22. Um, can you tell, by the way, which tank I've been playing for Mark of Excellence recently? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, it's this one. Also, sporting a, I believe, 40k skin, right? This is the Rot of Nurgle, um, the, the skin. I, I think it's a, it's a vaguely 40k inspired skin, right? I think so. Or a camo, sorry, so it's not skin, because it's, uh, in, well, call it what you will, right? Anyways. Um, so, it's what keeps me going, I, like, playing with, uh, and, and also part of the reason why I only go for 85%, not 95%. Um, getting to 85% is challenging enough and fun enough to where you really get to know the tank intimately. Um, F in chat for those two shells, by the way. F in chat for those two shells, gone too soon. Um, just, just horrible. Could you imagine if that hit? Uh, this game would have been so much better. Anyways, we're now going to play against the ISM, and we're going to show you what power creep means. Um, hello, Mr. ISM. You have a powerful turret. Unfortunately... Your whole armor is not so... Okay, Juggernaut, you're embarrassing me right now. You know what? Never mind. Let's deal with the light tank first. Uh, anywho, as I was saying... It's, it's challenging enough, and it makes it so you really need to get to know the tank really well. You need to play to all its strengths, and you need to know how to get a certain amount of damage every single time, in every single battle, right? That's the thing. Um, you need to have, you need to make the terrible games go relatively well for you, and you need to make the good games go really, really good for you, right? So you can actually get to the desired level. Um, and so, yeah. I find that very, very fun, and I also find it incredibly frustrating, which is good. Now, the, the combination of two is what really gets you going, is, is what really makes this game so bloody fun to me. Um, and so, that's what I've been doing, and by the way, I, yeah, I said I don't like spamming gold. It's two heavy tanks and I'm playing for Mark of Excellence, what do you want me to do? It's gonna be really difficult to penetrate him with standards, so you know what? Credit, hats off to him for not shooting premium ammo, but... Um, he's stronger than me, what can I say? Although he did, does penetrate me here, right? That sounds very wrong, but is what happened. Anywho, uh, <laughs> never thought I'd say that in a video. There, there you go, though. Uh, oh, by the way, I didn't answer the, um, the, the stove question. Uh, the first one on the left, that's, that's the answer. Anyways, as I was saying, um, looks like you found the spot where his, his shells can go through. Let's, uh, so I decided to, to move up a little bit here along the the thing, and yeah, there you go, and that's going to be him gone, 2.5 thousand, honestly, not great, not terrible, I think I need around 1.7 for the mark of excellence, on average, 2.5 battle like this, Mwah. and there you go, that's where he, he found that he can put two shells in and uh, get rid of me, um, and so that is still as fun as ever, paired with that frustration of, you know, um, getting hit by artillery twice and, you know, losing crew members and, I don't know, stuff like that, and then uh, it really makes it so you need to do, like, five extra battles just to make up for the loss in the Mark of Excellence if you do something really stupid, and 
It's, it's really fun and it's really challenging and I love that stuff. I really do. Um, and which is why I kind of keep coming back to the game. And yeah, there you go. The one thing I will say though that uh, I've been surprised by is how quickly I picked it back up. Um, the one thing I really want to learn now is the new tanks. I don't know all their weak spots and stuff off the top of my head. I don't know which of them have which guns and the caliber of their guns and so on. It really gets into some nitty-gritty details that you don't really want to know about, but it, it's important for um, knowing whether you can overmatch someone, whether they can overmatch your armor and so on and so forth. But yeah, uh, stuff like that I, I, I kind of want to figure out. But um, yeah, it, other than that, the game's pretty much still the same in terms of its meta, in terms of where you go, what you do, how you play, for the most part. Except that now, I feel like the pool of, thank of tanks that you go up against is a lot more fun. They have a lot more quirky mechanics that make them interesting to fight and interesting to um, both play with and play against, while simultaneously them not being ridiculously overpowered. Um, the hold down meta, I think, has been somewhat subdued in the sense that um, it's no longer really 100% hold down. Now it's, I think, medium tanks are a lot more meta now. Um, medium tanks with good hull armor. St oh, sorry, with good, uh, with good turret armor again, but no idea I was still spotted by, by the, the ISU at this point, and I had no idea he he relocated, but there you go. Um, I feel like the meta has, has changed a little bit uh, towards more mobile tanks that maybe don't have the best armor, but have alright mantlets and stuff like that, which is, far, which is fine. Um, the games are still incredibly quick, that's a problem, you know, ergo, meta shifting towards mediums. Um... <clears throat> But yeah, that's been my experience coming back to World of Tanks, basically. Um, up and down, as before, still plenty of problems with the game, but it hasn't really changed much. Although, the the couple of things that have changed, I don't like the, the World of Tanks Plus, I think it's way too powerful. Uh, being able to take off equipment is a BS, in my opinion, even if it's just standard equipment. Um, and now I think they got an automatic way of doing it as well, which is obnoxious. Um, but yeah, there you go. <clears throat> On the other hand, don't let, don't let anyone hear you hear me say this, but I don't think equipment's the most important thing in the game. Um, if you have standard equipment and you want to upgrade to Bond or in Improved or uh, Experimental or whatever, it'll make the tank better, undoubtedly so. Will it make the tank that much better that you're going to win games that you should have lost and stuff like that? Not really. Um, so I don't really think it's that important, so that, the game has that going for it, at the very least. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's about it. Um, we lost this game, obviously, as you can see, 8-4 to four is, is and, and we've lost control over most of the map, so, yeah, um, anyways, that's been it, that's been my return, my glorious and triumphant return to World of Tanks. In the week that I've been back, I have successfully marked the Tier 7 IS, 85%, and I have marked the... what was it? I marked another tank. I can't remember what it was. Oh, jeez, I think it was, a, it was a Tier 6 tank. I don't remember what it was. It was a tank destroyer. I know for a fact it was a tank destroyer, but I've marked that. I can actually check. Um, or in fact, actually, that's not, a bad, that's not a bad idea. Let me show you something. Behold my stuff. This is an Excel spreadsheet I have specifically made for World of Tanks. Yes, it is. Um, and I think I've just mucked it up a little bit. There you go. Yeah, and that, was, that was the IS. Just, you, now you know what my recording hotkey is, I suppose. There you go. So the SU-100, right? Is that the tank that I've marked? Last, I think so. Yes, I think so. Yeah, the SU one hundred. That was the 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 pre the other one that I've marked. Tier six Soviet tank destroyer. The gun was really getting on my nerves by the end, uh, missing some things that it really really shouldn't. But you know, ultimately it was done. And I have ace tanker on all of these. I have ace tanker on most of the tanks in my garage. But I want to make sure that I uh, that every tank I mark up to eighty five percent. I also have ace tanker on it. So there you go. Which 
has it hasn't happened to me yet that I haven't marked tank to 85% and didn't get ace, but you know, at some point it might. Anywho, uh, average tier for of the tanks that I've marked is 6.5, six heavies, 12 mediums, four TDs, one light tank. This is all, by the way, dynamic. So all I need to do when I mark, for example, let's say um, test tank, which is a tier 10. Um, French medium, for example, right? Everything updates. So French goes up, medium goes up, average tier goes up, so on and so forth. Total number of tanks marked goes up as well. So yeah, all of this is um, dynamic, and I've set this up one evening, and I've had this for about three years, I think, this, this spreadsheet. Um, and this is why I play World of Tanks, for this spreadsheet. I want to fill this out with uh, all the tanks from tier 5 to tier 10 at some point. Am I going to do that? Probably never. No, probably never, given how much I play or how little I've pl I play. But this is what I've managed to do so far in, in what the 11 years of World of Tanks, obviously not. I've, I've been playing for Mark of Excellence that long. Um, I think a, a couple of months in the previous year, and then I quit, and now again, I, I guess. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That's, that's it, ladies and gents. Thank you very much for watching. Um... Tell me if you're interested in more World of Tanks content. Um, mostly I don't do guides and I don't do reviews anymore, although I did in the past, but I feel like I'm not good enough at the game to tell you about a tank, um, at least independently, right? I have to look at other content creators, I have to look at other people, how they play it, and then I can tell, I can talk to you about tanks. Um, the same goes with like any tips and strategies and stuff like that. I really don't want to do that because there's people with... 10 times the amount of battles I have, and with way better scores, that um, I don't feel like what I would say is worthless, because I can definitely research a topic thoroughly with, uh, you know, just my general gamer skills, if you will. I could, I could present a video like that, but I feel like it's kind of pointless. You can just go to the people that are better than me and watch for tips and, and tricks and stuff like that. But what I can do is uh, just pure entertainment videos, you know, like, uh, like this one, or, um, you know, dealing with some more... Um, out of game um, struggles with you know motivation and and, and, and stuff like that those, those kinds of topics. Uh, one of my favorite videos that I've done was uh, the descent into madness when it came to uh, the marathons that this that this game had back in the day. So yeah, those were those were incredibly frustrating and fun to do. Nowadays they're a little bit easy. Um, and it's just because I've gotten better at the game, so they're really not that hard to do. Um, you just need to play a lot, and uh, <laughs> that's about it. Uh, but yeah, anywho, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I will see you all next time. Until then, like and subscribe and tell me what you think about this video and generally doing um, World of Tanks videos of this style. For example, when I mark a tank up to a certain amount, I can tell you how it went, talk you through the process and stuff, or, uh, you know, videos of this type if you're interested every now and again. This wouldn't be a regular thing, but like I said, once, uh, once a month or once every two weeks or three weeks or so, whenever I do something. Um, if you're interested in, in, in this game at all, that is. Anyways, my name's been Juggernaut. Thank you very much for watching. I've been incredibly busy lately with uh, work and stuff, so the videos haven't been coming out very regularly. Um, but I hope that'll change in about two weeks or so, and that I'll have some uh, more free time to do videos, and I'll be able to sort of schedule everything a little bit better, because I'm a bit falling behind on, on work and, and uh, some of the... Um, texts that I need to write for, for various publishing places and so on and so forth, so I, I need to really focus on my job. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, YouTube's been suffering a little bit with uh, irregular uploads. But uh, anyways, thank you for watching. Bear with me while I figure that out, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Until then, have fun, take care, and bye-bye.